Hello everyone, welcome back in today's tutorial on WebLogic Administration. In today's tutorial we are going to see the second part for the deployments, how we are going to achieve the deployment of application in WebLogic server. So let's start today's session. In earlier session we have seen the application server and the web application component details. Why we need to know these details? Because whenever we deploy an application on weblogic server there are some couple of things will comes into picture such as the configuration file like weblogic.xml what it contains how much control as an administration we administrator we have on that file what are the changes we can make so those are the things we should know before doing actual deployment and that is the reason we need to have the basic understanding of the application so, so far we have seen the application server, that is the web server, and also we have seen the web application details. What is the name, what is the archive name, that is the war file. What is the structure of file like meta INF, web INF, what are the important files such as web.xml uh, web or weblogic.xml file. So, there are the several things we have seen. In today's session, we are going to continue with the other application called as EJB application. EJB stands for Enterprise Java Bin. It is the J2E standard technology. So by using this technology, the developers of the application develops the server-side components. So EJB application is a server-side component. Likewise, the web application has a customer end or the user interface where the user can interact with that application. But the EJB application user cannot directly interact it's a server side component so user first interact with the web application and through the web application they can interact with this EJB application so it is an application it's not a library for us it's an application so what is the enterprise java bin enterprise java bin standardize the dev de development and deployment of java server component as i said the EJB application is itself server side component the ejb specification defines the relationship among following entities and ejb and it's a container container and application server a container and client so this relationship will be defined by the ejb specification what does it means ejb runs in ejb container and we, we need to have the application server so weblogic server has a two parts one is web server and other is application server EJB cannot run on web server because the resources which is required to run the EJB application will not available on web server however the application server contains all the resources which are required to run the EJB component or EJB application the resources such as JNDI data source will be available at application server level. So application server actually contains the EJB container and in that container the EJB application runs. And that is the reason these relationships are very important. The relationship between the EJB application and the EJB container, the EJB container and application server, EJB container and the client application which is invoking the EJB. What are the types of Enterprise Java Bins? Basically, there are four types of Java Bins. However, few of them are deprecated over the period of time of this technology. The types of EJBs are Stateless Session Bin, Stateless, Stateful Session Bins, Entity Bin, and Message Driven Bin. Stateless Session Bin does not maintain the state of the client. It is synchronous that means whenever the request is sent to the stateless session bin the response will be sent back it is synchronous these bins does not survive whenever the server crashes because it don't maintain the state of the client it is maintained in the memory for the better performance for example check validity of stock symbol calculate billing of a phone call etc these are the very basic calculation where the state of the client is not required the second is stateful session bin which maintains the state of the client has a conversational interact interaction 
as I said it maintains the state it is also synchronous as like stateless session bin does not survive a crash because when the application goes down this state, stateful session bin also cannot recover the example is book a flight and car rental for travel manage a shopping cart so suppose I have logged in I I, I captured few item on the shopping website and saved as my in the card shopping card after a few seconds something happened my browser close or particular uh, application close and I reopen then the, it maintains your states that happens with the help of the stateful sessions the entity pins it represents the persistent persisted data that means what are the data present in database can be presented with the entity bins this entity bins can survive can survive during the crash of server because these are stored as a persistent data as like stateless session bin and stateful session bin entity bins are also synchronous example here is represent a player statistic represent a stocks history those are the details are coming from the database the message driven uh, driven are the application like suppose if you send email I'm giving an example where uh, one person send email to other person so that person does not get a response immediately unless that the second person read the message and respond back so th this is the way actually nothing but the we have to send message and ignore the rest of the things what are the response will get or it is not immediate that response will not be immediate so other the sender will not worry about the response he will just keep sending the messages or keep sending the email so this is called as a asynchronous it is just one way so message driven bins are asynchronous bins also there are stateless that means these bins do not maintain the state of the request this this consumes the JMS messages. JMS stand for Java Messaging Service. So it's they consume those JMS messages. Example here is store logging messages. AJB application directory structure. So in earlier previous session we have seen the web application directory structure. In today's session we'll see what is the structure of the EJB application. EJB components are packed in a jar file like suppose if you have the session bean entity beans those will be packed into the dot jar file we configure an ejb by modifying its a deployment descriptor as like in web application we have the web dot xml which is a deployment descriptor for the web application similarly for ejb we have the ejb deployment descriptor ejb application jar format follows like this like the top level you will have the EJB name, EJB application name. It will have the classes like for the session bin, stateless session bin, or stateful session bin, or entity bins. Then we'll have the meta NF. Meta NF will contain the EJB hyphen jar dot XML and weblogic hyphen EJB dot hyphen jar dot XML. So in web application, we have the web dot XML and weblogic dot XML. In EJB, we have the EJB hyphen jar dot xml and weblogic hyphen ejb jar dot xml ejb administration task with weblogic ejb administration task includes configure and deploy the ejb application define the jndi name as per the ejb application because in ejb application everything will be treated as a resource so we have to configure a particular jndi for each resource and that we have to Take, take we have to take care as a weblogic administrator also monitor the EJB cache and pools what is an enterprise application an enterprise application is a set of resources grouped into one deployable unit and packed in a ER file so ER uh, EJB is also enterprise application so whenever we have the multiple session bins like the session uh, stateless session bin, stateful session bin, or enter uh, entity bins, 
or even JMS uh, bin. So we will create the jar dot jar file for the each of this component and we will group this all jar files in one single file it's called as a EAR it's an abbreviation for the enterprise application archive for so the the, the enterprise ar archive file can contains war file it can contain jar file it can contain both war as well as jar file so it's it's up to us how we are going to archive that so it's top level archive and within that you can have the sub archive such as war jar er etc or rar so web application we convert into war file ejb application we convert to jars java application we convert into jars resource adapter we convert into rar so all these application we can group into er j2 enterprise application architecture the architecture is very simple from the left hand side we can see the EJB application then we have the web application EJB application has the J2 modules such as EJB module which is the jar file and it has the corresponding deployment descriptor web application has its web application module called as a war and it has its own deployment descriptor along with that the application client module like java project it has a jar file which are independent project can be considered then resource adapter as a RAR. So all these JAR, WAR, JAR and RAR file will have its own de deployment descriptor and will be grouped into the EAR project that is J2E Enterprise Application Archive. So this Enterprise Archive will contain all these components, all the JARs, WAR and RAR files with their own individual deployment descriptor. Once we got this EAR file, we use the normal either command line tool or we can use the web logic console to deploy the EJB as an application. So this is the archive file will, will be provided by actually the source will be provided along with the deployment descriptor by developer to web logic administrator. By using the deployment descriptor we build that AR file at our end on the mostly unix server or defined on the win if you are working on the windows we can work we can create a er file on windows if you are working on the linux or unix we can build the er file on those operating system once we create er file we using the web logic console or the command line tool we can deploy the application why use an enterprise application Use an enterprise application to avoid the namespace conflict, declare enterprise wide security, deploy application as a one unit so everything will be in a single set, share enterprise wide EJB resources, configure local JDBC pool, configure local XML resources. So if we do not have the enterprise application or ER file, so we can deploy individual component also like we can deploy the WAR files also, we can deploy the JAR files also as library. So, but grouping or having the unit of work will not be achieved. So there will be separate uh, JDBC connections you have to configure, you have to separate configure the JDBC pool. So the in, instead of configuring individually, just to create one ER file, deploy it and use the common namespace or the uh, use a common security for all the applications. So that can be achieved very easily. And that is the reason we create the ER file. ER file structure looks like this. It has the name like here in this example, my enterprise application. It is the document root of the application. Then we have the meta INF folder. It contains application.xml and web application.xml. The application.xml is nothing but the enterprise application de deployment descriptor. The web hyphen application.xml is nothing but web logic enterprise application deployment descriptor. Then we'll have the various jar files for the each bins like session bins, stateless session bins or stateful session bin, etc. Or if you are having any Java ER jar files, those will be also there. If you have any web project, that will be also there. So all these additional jar files will be part of this ER. Configuring WebLogic specific features. We have to configure the enterprise wide properties within the WebLogic application.xml deployment descriptor what things we have to configure we have to configure the security realm we have to configure this xml parser entity mapping 
data sources also JMS connections if you are using JMS in your application so these are the details about the enterprise application as a web logic administrator we have to see the structure of the deployment descriptor and make sure we are creating all the required jar files in the ER file of course the developers definitely helps while building this uh, deployment descriptor for the EJB sometimes developer itself they, they create this deployment descriptor because whenever the developer develop the EJB at that time they actually test it locally in their system so deployment descriptor will be ready so we but there will be some slight changes because in each environment have the separate properties those property we have to as a web logic administrator update those property after deployment or after deployment also we have to do some more configuration uh, apart from this deployment descriptor so how to how this EJB project looks so if you are go to the uh, Eclipse you have to in order to create EJB go to the file go to the new and there you will find the EJB project if you do not find the EJB project at top level then you can go to the other section here you can search for the EJB and you will see the EJB project so just select that project click on new and give the name of the EJB project so for simplicity I have already created one EJB project and give the name EJB project you can give any other names too so these are the deployment descriptor I was talking about it has the entity bin, message driven bin, session bins if you are using web service then web dot war file will be created for the web service within this EJB then uh, the actual code will go in the EJB module and it will have the meta inf meta meta inf dot mf that is manifest file means what version of the your application then it has the web logic hyphen ejb hyphen jar dot xml that which where we have to configure the security jdbc details etc if you are going to build the build will be available build files will be temporarily stored here so this is the structure of the ejb application so 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 far we have seen the web server we have seen the web application and we have seen the EJB application so any of this application either ER file or WAR file we can deploy in the weblogic application server how we are going to do we will see in the next session so keep watching this space and do not forget to subscribe my channel thank you again for watching my video and have a nice time